you shirt. Good morning, uh, morning. Well, very good. Very good. Thanks. Good. Good. All right, guys. Um, we have been in lockdown for a while now, and we're still continuing this online learning. And before I start, I hope you guys are doing well. A lot of you guys have um, been sending me work, and I'm very happy that you guys are all up and running, and everybody's happy. And today, I just want to talk about a couple of things, and um, it's a couple of questions that you guys asked me as well, and we'll get Mr. Mr. Pierre, Pierre Shape here to help us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so today, guys, I want to talk about your practical work and how you actually get to um, start your projects, um, the process, and everything up to your final artwork when you're actually naming your artwork. So um, you guys have themes and you've already started doing mind maps and some of you have started doing research. But I just want to take you through this process. There's also a PDF document that you guys can look at that I've uploaded for you guys so you can see exactly where you are in the process. Remember guys, um, your final artwork is not only that um, painting or the drawing or the sculpture, whatever you're going to submit at the end. It is basically the whole process and how you actually went through the process and your research and putting stuff together. So let's have a quick look at that and I'm just going to open the document here. So we can actually read through this. Come on. Yeah, guys, so... Um, okay, so, so guys, important. it all started off with your mind map. Um, I gave you guys a couple of reasons why it's really important to a mind map. Now, I'm talking to the grade 11s and the grade um, 10s. You have a theme. So, starting the mind map, it's very, very easy to actually look at or, or start this by looking at the words in the theme. And then you're going to divide those words into sections and you're going to start, start writing words and ideas and anything that comes to mind when you think about this theme. And by the time you end this mind map, you will have a lot of words and a lot of different ideas that's really connected with this theme. But there will also be ideas and some thoughts that would be maybe out of the scheme of this big theme. Alright, so, so that's okay. And it's alright to actually go beyond and maybe find your way back because that's the way the mind works, we say. So after the theme guy, after the um, mind map, you guys are going to start your initial research. So the initial research, guys, it's not your thumbnails. This is everything to do with looking at artists, all right? And when you look at artists, not only artists, but artworks, you can never really separate the artwork from the art or the artwork from the artist's life because people create things because they in a certain period of time or they experience certain things. And, and that's why it's really important to look at his life. I don't want you guys to write a whole bio about the artist, but just the time of his life that, or the moments in, the, in his life that he went through when he actually created this specific artwork. So when you do this, you're going to look at maybe six or seven different artists. You're going to look at the artworks, and you're also going to look at their lives. I don't want you guys to only write things down. I really want you guys to see if you can find pictures of the artworks. This is more a visual exercise than your mind. Like this? Right. And then, after you've done that, you're also going to look at some other artists or some other art forms. That might include things like music or poetry or movies. And you're also going to include visuals of this in your initial research. Right, after the initial research guys, you're going to start your thumbnail ideas. Right, so thumbnail ideas is you're going to do quick small drawings or sketches, all right, with annotations and um, you will do a minimum of about five of these. Right, and that is to visually show um, where you actually got to how you think about this theme. Right. So that's quick little drawings, thumbnails, um, uh, not less than five or six, 
and then you are going to start looking at not only the theme but your idea of this thing right and then guys number four is the big one you're going to start exploring your ideas so this is looking at your mind map looking at your initial research with these artists and also looking at your thumbnails and then you are going to ask a couple of questions first question what are you trying to say right what am i trying to say with this piece of art right. remember guys i told you that art is not only to create beautiful things but it's actually to change the way people think about things right then the next one is your personalization guys it's very important and i know i've been hammering on this right mr pierre yes we've been hammering on this a lot it's to do with your personality your personalization how can you take this theme or this idea and make it your own right so what are you trying to say and then how can you make this personal right yes and then what would your message be through the medium you're using for example if you're going to create a painting and you're going to use oils why are you using this medium what is the message does it make sense does it relate to the theme right then number 8 exploring and experimentation of color media and compositions right so what you're going to do is is you're going to start experimenting and this is all these little paper samples and getting paints together or maybe looking at some digital images maybe you might think that this might be easier for me to actually use a photography kind of theme also reference is very important all right so you're going to look and explore and experiment with different colors media and compositions and then number 9 guys the viewer's consideration all right so this means if i actually look at your artwork or somebody comes in and they look at your artwork how does the artwork relate to me and how do i relate to this artwork so there's always a communication between the viewer and the people that creates the artwork and what would that be and how can you actually enhance this or think about ideas how you can actually include the viewer in this artwork right and then the last one is reflection going back and just looking back at it and 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 um basically seeing how if i look back from the start to the end how does this actually make sense how does this all come together right that's number 10 Then guys, number 11 is you're going to choose one of the ideas and expand on it um in your final art book. All right. Very importantly, always include examples or images of your experimentation in your visual diary. All of this guys happens in your visual diary. Remember that your visual diary is the only way to accurately communicate your thoughts and processes leading um to making all of your art books. Take your own reference images. take a variety playing with settings and this is all to do with the camera all right so you want to take um images as you actually progress in this artwork when you started um and you're going to look at different lights different colors and um, different angles your process in this work all right color studies may also be required as color can kind of like mood in your artwork color is very important when it comes to any kind of art all right and then guys your final rationale that's basically a short paragraph telling me and the moderator and your viewer exactly what this art book's all about right and once you've done that also in your visual diary and this is you this you're going to present because when your moderator or me or your viewer comes in and he looks at the art book he wants to know exactly um where you came up with this idea and what are you trying to convey or trying to say may the ma- the big mcdonald's art book we were talking about right very important to actually read the rationale and then the last one guys you're going to give a good um title to your art book so you can tell uh, you're going to um tell the story of the art book through your title make sure it's relevant and it links to the theme and uh, very important guys it needs to be personalized so the title is very important that's basically it guys so what we're going to do is is we're going to look at some artists to do with your theme and um I hope you guys enjoy this 
and hopefully guys most of you guys will start with your thumbnail sketches now maybe some of you are still finishing your research and um, I hope that this made sense and that's a lot easier for you guys to go into your practical work remember guys there's still some more theory coming so just keep that in mind keep safe and I hope you guys will um, have fun in the next couple of weeks till we see each other again bye bye all in this picture I've learned how to paint a nose from this picture, how to do reflected light, the use of impasto, the use of contradiction within pictures, of having very limited movement of brush mark making with lots of brush mark making, how that creates a kind of poetic in paint. For this picture, I took all the, the kind of movement and the abstraction, the way that he used uh, the other end of the brush to draw into the paint. Often, people start figuratively and then end up being more abstract. And I found that when you get to a certain point in figuration, you've painted so much, you're almost afraid to go to abstract. So I started the process the other way around to force my hand. The whole picture was made from this abstract area of paint. It looks like nothing, but that was so hard to make that, to hold on to that, because that should be really like this area here, because the sun's hitting here. What Rembrandt's really good at is he turns the key. There are little points of volume all over the picture. So he's got this white cap, and the way that the shadow goes here on the forehead of the white cap, he blends the white of the light hitting the forehead with the cap, and the, these two tones hit together. And it's a way of him going, right, I'll turn the volume up here, here, here. And I've learned that, that you have these quiet moments in the painting, and then on certain moments, you turn up the volume. And so that's, that's one of those moments. This has been the most incredible learning experience. I literally worked with Rembrandt close-ups all around me. I ate my lunch looking at the picture, looking at Rembrandt. It makes you raise your bar. It's like um, deconstructing a great piece of Beethoven or something like that. It's on that level. Rembrandt is like a Beethoven, a Shakespeare. I mean, he's, he's that level of humanity, who, of, of someone who can turn that screw inside you. You can see so much modern painting. The whole picture, if you divide it up, you know, there's a Rothko here, there's a Rothko here. Think about Bacon uses a limited ground with impasto paint. I mean, that comes directly out of Velasquez and Rembrandt. What this show really exhibits is how many artists have looked at Rembrandt and taken different things from him. The dexterity of, of imagination and human thinking and ways to look at the world and themselves is just, you know, it's all here, isn't it? And, and Rembrandt becomes this pinnacle. You know, you, you can take any of these pictures and see Rembrandt. If I was Rembrandt in 350 years and a lot of artists are doing work about my work, I'd be so happy. So it makes him a young kid on the block. The marriage, the, the, the mirroring of all the pictures here is just inspiring, isn't it?